What do you call a Kia at the top of a hill? A miracle. <laughs> Welcome back to another video with Carl's Garage brought to you by Straight Outta Content. And today I'm going to give you my top five reasons not to buy the new Kia EV6. <laughs> Yeah, it was just a little bit of a joke there, and uh, I thought that joke was pretty funny. Hopefully you do too. If not, leave a comment down below of your favorite Kia joke or Hyundai joke, if you have one. I have a lot. But today, I'm gonna give you five reasons why not to purchase the brand new EV6 that's coming out by Kia. It's basically the Ionic 5, and I actually have five reasons not to buy that. Okay guys, if this is your first time tuning into this channel, I happen to cover a lot of recalls with Hyundai and Kia. I cover the engines, I cover the hybrid cars, and I also, in this case, cover the EV cars. So in this video, I'm going to give you my top five reasons to stay away from the new 2022 EV6 made by Kia. It's no different than the Hyundai Ionic 5. So I just wanna kind of spare anybody who's looking to purchase that vehicle, they just, revealed it yesterday in New York City and they made all this hoopla, but there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of ghosts and demons and <laughs> goblins behind the curtain and the quality control department in North America and in Korea through Kia and Honda has been extremely poor. So I wanna give you my top five reasons. So let's go ahead and start with number five. As you guys heard earlier in the video, I made a joke about Kia and that's really what they are. As of right now, Kia is on the is on the brink of being a joke. Right now, <clears throat> they have well over 6 million recalls on their cars. I have a video where I go over 44 reasons why not to purchase a Hyundai or Kia, old or new. And in between those years that aren't on the list, case in point, my 2015 Kia Optima 2.4 liter has a recall out on it, but it's not on that list. So that's my number five reason to not purchase the Kia EV6 is because it's a Kia. That EV6 is going to start around $45,000. I know a lot of people might've got a lot of money from the stimulus check and stuff like that, but $45,000 is a lot of money to me. And chances are it's a lot of money to you if you're watching this video. And to me, I just can't justify spending $45,000 on a brand new Kia. Who spends 70,000 on a Hyundai? Whether or not it's, a, it's an EV vehicle or a car with your engine. Every, no, I will stand corrected. Almost every Kia or Hyundai vehicle that has come out since 2020, 2019, and 2021 has had a recall. Case in point, the 2022 Carnival, recall. The 2020 Ionic, recall. The 2020 Kona, recall. Uh, the 2020 Sonata, recall. All of these recalls are due to engine fires or engine failure. The 2020 Kia Soul, recall. The 2020 Ki and 2021 Kia Solettos, recall. All due to, now due to piston rings and stuff like that. So again, I just don't understand the purpose or the reason why you, the consumer, or me, the consumer, should ignore all the other auto manufacturers out there who also have recalls. They may have recalls, but none of them are due to fire and engine failure. So again, I would never spend $45,000 on a Kia if I'm gonna spend $45,000. And again, that's MSRP. So chances are when you get to the dealership, yeah, you get the $7,500 tax credit and stuff like that, but you're still starting at 45 grand. And I can guarantee you the dealership is going to kind of jack up the price so that they can make up most of that $7,500 that they're gonna lose from the, from the tax credit. So it may be MSRP 45 grand, but these EV, these Kia EVs are gonna be no less than 50 grand. And that's not including the GT. So the GT is gonna be well over 60 grand. And I just can't see, even after the tax credit, spending $50,000 on a Kia. It just doesn't make any sense. There's a lot of other models out there that you can get, but I will get into those later. So let's move on into my number four reason why not to purchase a Kia EV6.
customer service. My number four reason for why not to purchase a Kia EV6 is customer service. I deal with this every single day, all day. Just yesterday in the video that I posted again, 44 reasons why not. No, I'm sorry, 44 reasons not to purchase a Hyundai a Kia. And then I also have another video where now people are being denied for not having the knock detection sensor software update on their vehicles. And a lot of people are being, you know, just told, I'm sorry, I can't do anything for your car. I know your engine blew, but I can't do anything for your car. And the customer service is extremely bad over at Kia and Hyundai. Why do I know this? Because Hyundai has paid out well over $500 million in lawsuits and settlements, and so has Kia. So combined between Hyundai and Kia, they have well over a billion dollars spent in settlements and lawsuits, all due to failure to replace people's engines, failure to take care of their consumers, failure to inform people properly about the issues that are going on with their car. Again, my three, two, and one reasons of why not to purchase the EV6, I'm gonna jump onto my computer like I always do, and I'm gonna show you the data because that's what I do here at Carl's Garage. I like to show you the data. I don't just like to sit on here and just give my own opinion. I'm doing it based off of my experience. So if you had a better experience with your car, great. Again, I have a 2015 Kia. I have a 2015 Kia Optima. It has 137,000 miles on it. I have had, God forbid, <laughs> please God, please keep my car safe. <laughs> I have had no issues. It started to stall, but then I got the um, the sensor software update. I got the knock sensor uh, update on the car. I also had to replace the valve cover. I also had to replace the AC compressor. I also had to replace the auxiliary fan. So, you know, those all came out of pocket on top of that engine could fail at any day now. So I'm not telling you this from somebody who's bitter, who doesn't have the car. I'm giving my opinion based off of the experience, based off of the, each individual that comments on these videos, that watches these, thank you very much, that watches these videos and comes to me and says, Carl, can you help me get my engine replaced? This dealership denied me. Carl, can you help me get my engine replaced? This, uh, I called Kia and they denied me. They're telling me I don't have this. They're telling me they can't do it because I have a guy right now, he has a 2012 Kia Soul or a Kia Sorento or something like that. It's a 2012 Kia and they denied him because the piston rings caused his engine failure. And they're telling him that the recall is only due to rod bearings. Like, how can you do that? It's, the proof is there. So that's my number four reason of why not to purchase a new Kia EV6 is because of customer service. If anything happens with that car, which there already are recalls on that car's sister or brother, the exact same car, the identical car to the Kia EV6, is the Hyundai Ionic 5. They're the exact same car, just a different badge. And there's already a recall on Ionics. The Ionic 5 isn't isn't out yet. It hasn't hit the streets, you know, just a couple of people to test drive and stuff like that. But there's already, for the 2020 Ionic, there's already risk due to engine fire. There's already a recall. So why would I get on here and suggest that you purchase this vehicle when I know that the customer service is bad? And I have plenty, hundreds of people who have dealt with uh, bad customer service from Kia and Hyundai. So that's my number four reason. I'm gonna go ahead and go on to number three. My number three reason why you should not purchase any Kia, especially the new 2022 Kia EV, is because of resale value. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to show you evidence and facts and research. A lot of people like to comment, you don't do your research, you're just opinionated. No, I'm not opinionated. I just like to give the facts. Again, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over here to my computer and I'm going to show you how fast Kia's drop in value. Not just, hey, everybody knows once you drive a car off the lot, it drops in value. But Kia is one of the, in the top five vehicles and their SUVs that drop in value. It, it, within the first five years, they drop tremendously. They just don't hold their value. Kia and Hyundai vehicles do not hold their value. So whatever you pay for a Kia now, if you go pay 50, 60 grand for, or even 40, say you get one for 40 grand, a new Kia EV6 in 2022, you're like, yeah, I'm in my new car. Well, by 2027, five years from now, 
your car is going to be, you know, probably between like 50% less, Le yet you will still be paying, chances are by the time you get to five years, you wouldn't have paid it down much depending on your, I mean, depending on your, um, on your interest rate, you know what I mean? So, cause they're getting people in there, you know, longer terms, they're getting people in there, you know, zero interest down and all this other stuff. So five years from now, your car is not going to, not going to be worth almost half as much as it was when you first got it off the lot. But if you bought a Tesla, it's going to be worth something. You know what I mean? And a lot of these other manufacturers, you buy a Toyota, you buy a Lexus, you know, it's going to be worth something when it comes, you know what I mean? Five years from now, you know that like we, we, that's proven. So let me go ahead and jump into the numbers. Let me show you guys on my computer, the how fast Kia's devalue. Okay, guys. So as you can see, we're over here on my desktop. We're over here on my MacBook and you can get to this. So as you see, it's highlighted, but I'm going to show you how you can get to it. So this way, you're not thinking I made it up. So if you type in do Kia cars, hold their value. Okay. Among popular brands, Fiat has the worst resale value, losing an average of 59.3% in the first five years. This is followed by Buick, 58%, uh, Chrysler, or Chrysler, they spelled it wrong, 56.5%, and Kia, 55.2%. For popular models, the Kia Sorento is the lowest resale values, losing 61.5% of its value in the first five years. Again, we're gonna click this article. This was December 2nd, 2020. Not much has changed since then, except for the new models. Whenever we come down here, uh, also, uh, which cars lose their values faster? So hybrids lose their values faster. You guys can read this article later. I will also put this in the link in the description down below. But um, let's get rid of this so we have more screen. Uh, what car brands have the worst resale value? Again, I will read it again in yellow. Among popular brands, Fiat, Fiat has the worst resale value losing an average of 59.3% in the first five years. This is followed by Buick 58%, Chrysler 56.5%, and Kia 55.2%. Among luxury brands, Volvo has the worst resale value with values falling 61% in the first five years. Uh, runners up for the worst value luxury brands, Jaguar, Land Rover, and Acura, okay? Again, Kia is definitely, lot, definitely not a luxury brand. So we're gonna, oh, every time it does that, it goes away. So we're gonna click this because I wanna keep it highlighted, okay? I want to keep it highlighted for you guys viewing pleasure. Let's move down to what SUV has the lowest resale value. So we know that Kia makes cars and they also make SUVs. The Land Rover brand of SUVs has the lowest resale value, losing an average of 60% of their value in the first five years. The Land, the Land Rover Range Rover has the lowest resale value among all SUV models, losing 62.7% of its value in the first five years. Right up next, right next, so everybody knows, well, if you don't know, Land Rover makes a crap car. That's just known throughout the market. If you're a car guy, you know, if you get into the, they're beautiful cars, they look amazing, but everybody knows if you get into a Land Rover, now the British, they may, they may argue me, they may jump on this video and hate me, but I'm sorry, you guys just make a crap car, okay? Anyway, uh, right here in yellow, for popular models, the Kia Sorento has the lowest resale values, losing 61.5% of its value in five years. Okay, so that's the cars right there, top three, <clears throat> top three, top five. If you're not including luxury, top three, Kias, also Hondas, that should be there as well, but I typed in Kia. And then we're gonna move on to their Sorento, which is a very popular vehicle, but as you know from all the issues that happened with it for over, you know, during so many recalls, they, <clears throat> they lose 61% of their value in the first five years. So, why would you purchase that type of brand? And in fact, what, oh, this is just one article. He only typed in one article. No, let's move on to a second article. I have a second article here. Kia depreciation. Kia uh, wouldn't want to be at yet, I mean, at, yeah, at least <laughs> when it comes to resale value. Kia falls in the bottom half when looking across popular model, uh, popular vehicle manufacturers. The exception of Kia is their sole model, which ranked in the top 25 of all models for their value retention. Uh, what pulls Kia down, however, is their trifecta of the Sorento, Sedona, and Cadenza, which all fall in the bottom of the list for overall depreciation by, by year five. So this right here is a graph. Again, I will put this link in the description as well. The 2019 is our top pick for the best model year value for the Kia vehicles. So they're basically saying, if you're gonna buy a vehicle, you want its best value, get a 2019. With the 2019, you would only pay an average of 69% of the price as new and 80, with 83% of the vehicle's uh, useful life remaining. 
<clears throat> depending on what car that is. <laughs> the 2018 and 2017 model years are also attractive years for the Kia models and provide a relatively good value. Our rankings, our rankings consider multiple factors, including the orig including original new prices, current prices, and maintenance costs. It, there's a link there because maintenance costs is tr tremendous through the roof. The remaining years uh, of our overall predictable expenses. Pretty sure it's supposed to be predictable. Uh, our top ranked model year represents the, the most car for the money with a Kia model. So here's a graph for all those people. They're, this is saying that, according to CarEdge.com, they're saying that if you want to purchase a Kia, this is its, uh, you should get one around 2019. It should hold its value. Obviously, when you come down here, it's 100% because that's 2021, you just got it. But everybody knows once you drive a car off the lot, you're gonna lose value. So this is the graph going all the way back to 2019. I mean, going back to 2009 that lost 81% of its value, depreciation, and then it just, I mean, it goes down as the year gets newer, but I mean, look at somebody like me, it was a 2015, that's 55%. If you're looking at a Toyota or a Lexus or a Hyundai, obviously not Acura, but if you're looking at like a Hyundai or there's a lot of Subaru and stuff like that, their numbers are a lot lower as far as depreciation. So I just can't see the justification for purchasing one when you know that even if it is a new EV6, it's going to drop in value. Okay, so that's it for my number three reason why not to purchase the new Kia EV6. Let's move on to number two. My number two reason for not to purchase a new 2022 Kia EV6, can't shine a turd. They are the exact same car as the Ionic 5, the exact same car. And the Ionic has been out for a few years and the technology has not changed. So let me go ahead back to my computer and show you guys more data of why you should not spend your hard earned money on a new EV6. It's because the EV6 is just an Ionic 5 with a different badge. Again, you can't shine a turd. Let's go ahead and jump on the computer. Okay guys, so my number two reason why not to purchase the new 2022 EV6 is because it is the exact same car as this. Exact same car. This is a 2020 right there, 2021 Hyonic, Hyonic, Hyundai Ionic car. All full EV, full electric car. Same, everything that's in this car is the exact same thing that is in this car except this one just has a lot different, you know, body styles and stuff like that. And they actually have a GT version, which they do not have a GT version of the Hyundai Ionic 5. They just have a regular version of the Ionic 5, but it looks like that they will do a GT version in this one, which will be the, uh, the EV6. So that's where they try to get you. They try to get you, see right here. Kia's performance claims that the GT are impressive. It sprinted to 62 in 3.5 seconds, which is crazy. I've never heard of 62. If we come over here to Ford, we have the numbers for zero to 60 in 3.8 seconds. And then we also have some other numbers down here, 3.8 seconds, zero to 60. So that's kind of a little weird, but if you notice the torque numbers here versus the torque numbers on the GT, which are 546, and the Ford is 600. So we all know that torque pulls. Torque is what pull. You can have more horsepower, that's fine. You have more horsepower, but the GT has more torque. And there's about an 88 pound feet different of, difference of torque between the EV6 and the new Mustang. Anyway, so let's go on to Kia's performance claims that the GT are impressive. A sprint to zero to, a sprint to 62 in 3.5 seconds at a top speed of 162 miles an hour. Again, we'd like to see these numbers on the street. It also features software that is said to mimic the behavior and limited of a limited slip differential. Hyundai has not announced any sort of performance version of their related Ionic EV, right? Ionic 5 EV. So Kia may have the exclusive on the high power drivetrain, okay? So this is, I'm not even gonna get into the EV yet. I mean, into the um, Ionic 5, I mean, into the, I'm not gonna get into the EV6 GT yet. I'm just gonna stay on the, on the regular, regular Schmegler EV6, okay? Because this is gonna be the one that most people purchase. And for, where's the price range? Where do they recommend the price? Yeah, 
Uh, we expect the EV6 to start around 45 grand when it reaches the US showrooms early 2022. The GT is likely to cost considerably more, possibly around 55 grand. That's insane. That's insane for a car manufacturer who currently has a recall. So right here, we have the Kona, which is no longer allowed in Korea. They're only selling it to America right here. Things started out well for Hyundai Kona Electric, right? So this is the same technology that they've been using. They're claiming that it's some new GMP technology that they're putting into these cars and they want you to trust that their new EV technology is better uh, than their old EV technology. Well, guess what? We heard that same type of information when they said, well, you know, our new engine is better in the Carnival and their new engine is better in the K5 and in the Soul and the Soletos and the Sorento and the Sonata. They told us the same exact thing. And everybody went out and said, you know what? I know my Optima, I know my old Sorento, uh, had, you know, had engine issues, but let me trust their new ones. And they went out and they purchased these vehicles and what happened? Piston ring failure. So how can you trust that Kia has made better um, electric batteries for this new Kia EV6 when there's already a recall on the, on the Kona and on the Ionic? Where's, oh, right here. 4,700 Hyundai Ionic Kona EV vehicles recall for battery fire issues. This was early March of this year. So barely three months from a massive recall over a potential fire risk, Hyundai is once again facing fire issues as it works a remedy, uh, as it works to remedy potential battery short circuit in two of the electric vehicles, the Ionic EV and the Kona Electric. So that's the reason why I got so much hate on my first five reasons why not to buy the Ionic 5. And now I assume I will get a lot of hate on five reasons why not to purchase a new Kia EV6. Because how, why would I purchase a vehicle that currently right now, this vehicle is barely out. It's barely out and it already has the same issues. And again, if you have this vehicle and you're looking at this, if you have a, a, a Hyundai or if you have a Hyundai Ionic or an EV, um, you know, come here and, you know, Check, call this number, you know what I mean? Because Hyundai will notify owners beginning April 30th. So that was, what, 20 days ago? If we look at my time right here, so today's the 19th, that was 20 days ago. So that's my number two reason why not to purchase the 2022 Kia EV6. Let's move on to number one. Yeah, you guys probably guessed it. My number one reason why not to purchase the new 2022 EV6, the recalls, that's it. There's so many recalls. There's almost 7 million recalls on all of these vehicles. And there's still currently recalls on all of Hyundai's and Kia's EV vehicles. I have the proof. You guys just seen a bunch of it in my reason number two and you guys have seen it in all my other videos. I just don't see what all of the other recalls, all the recalls that are out for, that are due to engine fire, battery fire, and engine failure due to piston rings in the 2022 and 2020 models, and then due to rod bearings in the older models, and then now issues with the batteries, I just don't see a reason why one of us, the consumer, should trust Kia or Hyundai. You guys, you know what I mean? Let me go ahead and jump into my computer and show you guys some more details on current recalls that are going on with their cars. Let's go ahead and jump into my computer. Okay, guys, so I, I kind of touched on it in my number two, but in my number one, number one reason is recalls. Recalls due to what's going on with Kia and Ionic vehicles. That's my number one. I know I my number two was because it's basically the same exact car, which it is. They're basically taking everything that, because they're using the same platform. They may change up the technology just a little tiny bit, but they're using the exact same platform. The same thing that they did for their engines, their GDI engines. Well, the first batch of GDI engines had con uh, connecting rod bearing issues. Their second wave of GDI engines had piston ring issues. So what makes you think that their first wave of recalled EV vehicle batteries have their issues. They're only gonna change a little bit of 
technology and then they're just going to release it out and they're going that this right here is the car that they're going to release it out on so my number one reason is the recall so if we go down here and i'm going to this article is really good because it gives the batteries that they're using so here we go after a long investigation and plenty of customer complaints like i said customer service my number three reason no my number four reason customer service so again, after a long investigation and plenty of customer complaints, it turns out that the battery cells made by LG Solutions were the cause. Okay, so they didn't quality control, and we can click this, they didn't quality control their batteries that they were using. They just wanted to make a cheap, quick vehicle. GM and LG Energy to build second ultimatum, Ultim battery cell plant, General Motors reveal EV investment. So. This article isn't even here, but we're gonna go back to this one, boom, boom, boom. And uh, we're gonna just read a little more into what's going on. So again, after a long investigation, plenty of consumer complaints, it turns out that the battery cells made LG, made by LG Energy, Energy Solutions were the cause. The investigation said that fires were caused by a folded anode tab that could allow the lithium planting on the anode tab to contact the cathode, resulting in an electrical short. Again, putting out an electrical fire is a lot different and your average human is not equipped to do it. Neither is your average fire department or your average EMS department. They're not equipped to do it. Putting out a battery fire is a lot different than putting out any other fire out there. So you gotta be extremely cautious. And again, they're not selling Nakona in Korea. They are, they've stopped selling Nakona in Korea. They are only still selling it to Americans. It's insane. So whenever we come down, um, the faulty battery cells caused a massive 82,000 Hyundai EVs recalled. So a massive recall in 82,000 Hyundai EVs. A battery management system, BMS update, did not solve the problem completely. So they tried to solve the problem. And look, we're used to acronyms. By now, if you own a Kia or a Hyundai, you should be used to an acronym. You're Because we're used to the KSDS, and then we're used to now the, the piston ring something. So we're so used to acronyms. So now I guess you need to get used to the BMS, which is called, well, it should, never mind. I won't cuss because YouTube will ban me, but the battery management system. So update that did not solve the problem. So the Korean automaker had no choice but to replace the entire battery pack. All of the defective cells came from LG's ES plant in Nanjing, China. Hmm, I won't even get into that. I will not get into that. Let's move on. All that's gonna do is cause a political thing and I choose not to get into that. Anyway, in case you're wondering, the upcoming Hyundai Ionic 5 is using completely different battery cells from SK Innovation. Okay, right? Here we go, SK Innovation to pay 1.8 billion to LG Energy to avert ban. Now, I don't know what that means. I guess they agreed to a settlement. I'll do a video on this later. But again, to me, this just sounds like, hey, look, we gotta find somebody else to go, to go with. We're making this new car. We need to find somebody else and they found SK. Where's SK out of? I'm sure you can dig a little bit more and I probably will, but again, that's, who that's the battery, the Ionic 5, and the EV6 will have an SK Innovation battery, okay? Because of all this, Hyundai has decided to discontinue the Kona Electric locally in Korea. The more advanced Ionic 5 will be completely focused instead. So the Kona will still be sold in America, but it's banned in Korea, crazy. Currently, there are no plans to discontinue the Kona Electric in the US or in other markets. The Kona Electric was recently refreshed for the US and European markets, so that might be a reason, that might be the reason for not stopping production in those markets. So basically, they're reshining the turd and they're pushing it out. And then they reshined it again, even better, and they gave you this, the 2022 EV6, which is basically the Kona on steroids. So we're gonna finish up this, my number one reason. Uh, the recalls, of course, of course, hurt sales. Hyundai said sales of the Kona Electric dropped 40% in the first quarter of 2021. The Chevy Ball also has its own fires and recalls, 68,000 vehicles globally. Its battery cells were produced by the same um, LG batteries, but reflashing of the ECU's BMS is all that was needed. <laughs> so, so again, this is where you've got to look between, you've got to read between the lines. Because Kia and Hyundai and people are going to jump on this video and say, well, it's the LG batteries, right? But this right here proves 
a battery management system update did not solve the problem completely, right? But Chevy, the Chevy Bolt, Chevy, the beautiful American company making these cars, got these batteries from um, LG, had the same issues, a lot less recalls because they have 68,000 versus 80,000. But guess what? Its battery cells were also produced by LG ES, but a reflashing of the EVs, BMS, is all that was needed, okay? That's all that was needed. So they were able to fix it with just a reflashing of the ECU. I mean, of the, of the um, well, not ECU in this case, of the BMS system, of the battery management system. That update did not fix their batteries. So I can guarantee you that the batteries that they use had to be different. They had to be different or their BMS system, whatever software that Hyundai and Kia is using, is gotta be trash. But either way, if Chevy can fix it, why can't you? That's my question. If Chevy can fix it with just a BMS update, why can't you? So you can't blame, you can't blame them because this doesn't say, this does not say that Chevy's using a different battery. Does not say that. They just reflash it and then that's all that they needed. You guys, Kia and Hyundai, you guys had to switch all the way over to a brand new battery company. And maybe SK Innovation is good. I don't know. I'm definitely going to do my research since they're going to be putting a lot of batteries in these new cars. But that right there is my number one reason why not to purchase a 2022, this turd right here, 2022 Kia EV6. Okay, guys. So that's going to be it. And hope you enjoy. Okay, guys. So that's going to wrap it up for this video. My top five reasons not to purchase the new 2022 EV6. Again, a lot of people are going to hate me. A lot of people hated me for the Ionic 5 video, my top five reasons not to purchase that car. Again, when that car comes to America, you guys let me know if you want to purchase that car. Leave comments down below, DM me on Instagram and let me know, hey, I would like to purchase that car and here are my top five reasons why I should or why I will. Please, I want to hear your feedback. Me personally, I run a business, we budget everything, we are very successful in what we do. Again, I do YouTube full time. So that's very hard to maintain, you know, your home, your expenses and stuff like that with just YouTube. And you guys can see from the amount of subscribers, I don't have a lot of subscribers. So it's not like that YouTube is paying all of my bills. My business pays all of my bills and my family and stuff like that, all the investments and stuff like that that we have. So with that being said, I would not spend my money again on a new Kia or Hyundai product. Again, I have a Kia sitting right out there. I have a Kia, but again, I would not, I cannot wait until that Kia's value is close enough to where it makes sense getting rid of it. Right now, hey, it works and I'm going to keep it until it makes financial sense to get rid of it. But until then, it doesn't make financial sense to get rid of it. But would I purchase a new one? Is the next vehicle that my wife and I are going to purchase going to be a Kia or a Hyundai? No, she's fully, my wife loves Toyota through and through. And personally, I love Tesla. She likes Tesla as well. So I think our next vehicle will probably be a Tesla because we definitely, our next vehicle will definitely be an EV, um, whether or not it's an EV SUV or an EV, just, you know, like a Mustang or something like that, the new Maki, I like those as well. But again, so those are my five reasons of why not to purchase the new EV6. You might not like them. You might hate me. Please leave your comments down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like this video, give it a thumbs down. Either way, it still supports and helps the YouTube algorithm get my videos out there. But as you guys know, and the people who actually follow me, you guys know that I'm here to help you. So if you do not have an EV car and you have a car with an engine in it and your engine has failed, you know that you can contact me and I will help you out. I will give you my spare time and I will really help you get your engine replaced. That's what I do for people here in Texas. So again, thank you for tuning into this video. Make sure you check out all my other videos pertaining to Kias and Hyundai vehicles. If you have any questions, leave comments down below. Don't forget that you can support the channel by purchasing anything off of Flash Custom Designs website. Got some new merch coming from Straight Outta Content and a new channel that's going to go up. I will not say it yet, but I will be starting a separate uh, Straight Outta Content channel and this channel will be dedicated to business. So that I'll just leave it there. 
Okay, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. Can't wait to see you guys again. Make sure you tune in for my next video. It's gonna be big. There's some big things happening in Houston. So that's what my next video will be on. Okay, guys, thank you for always, and I'm hungry. So yeah, I think I'm gonna go eat. Peace.